Right, so these two questions came from uh, uh, Jack 2017 and before uh, you skip it, I mean the net aspirants or the gate aspirants, they think this is from Jam and they skip it. I just want to tell you, just try and solve this question, right? So in this question they had asked, uh, this was from NAT type questions where you are not given options, there is just a blank space given and you have to write the correct answer. So the question was that this particular compound was given, this coordination compound. Right? And they ask the number of unpaired electrons in this particular coordination compound. So you have to find out the number of unpaired electrons in this coordination compound. Now, if you saw, if you are, uh, if, like if you solve this question, uh, so you can write NiH6 two minus, right? Because it will it will dissociate into ions in the solutions. It will dissociate into K plus and NiH6. And since there are two two uh, two atoms of potassium. So we have 2 minus charge over here because potassium has a plus charge, right? So we have 2 minus. So NiH6 2 minus. Now if you calculate the uh, oxidation state of nickel in this case, the oxidation state state of nickel will come out to be plus 4, right? And nickel has a configuration of D84S2. So in plus 4 oxidation state, it will exist as D6, right? And if you see there is a weak field ligand attached to the nickel, right? So weak field, chlorine is a weak field ligand, so it will not lead to pairing. And so in D6, uh, if we draw, it's an octahedral complex. So if we draw the T2G, okay, and we draw the EG, right? So six electrons are there, and fluorine will not lead to pairing, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So how many unpaired electrons? Four unpaired electrons. So the answer you will write as four unpaired electrons. But that would be absolutely wrong. Okay, so this this is this is one catch in this question that any transition metal. Remember, this is very very important for any uh, uh, any aspirant for from any entrance exam, right? Be it gate, net, or jam. If a transition metal is in a higher oxidation state, higher than plus three, so if it is in plus four or plus five, transition metals in higher oxidation states will always be paired. Okay, irrespective of what if we have a strong field ligand or a weak field ligand. So in this case, because the nickel is in plus four oxidation state, so the electrons will get paired. And if in D6 we get the electrons as paired, then there will be no unpaired electrons. So the answer for this is zero unpaired electrons, right? So this some so you should remember this that in higher oxidation states, higher than plus three, okay? They will always be paired, right? And one, one more important thing since we are discussing this question, cobalt, okay, in plus 3 state, in plus 3 state, if it's bound to oxygen, okay, if it's bound to oxygen, that is it is forming a coordination compound with oxygen, then in cobalt plus 3, there will always be pairing, okay, there will, it will always lead to pairing, in, in case cobalt is existing in plus 3 oxidation state and there is an oxygen as a ligand, right. But if we take any uh, any other uh, metal, like if we take Ni plus 3, okay, or we take chromium plus 3, if it's if only for cobalt, will it will the oxygen lead to pairing in plus 3? But if we take nickel plus 3 or uh, chromium plus 3, then in that case, if the ligand is oxygen, pairing would not take place, okay? So this is an, this is the only exception that cobalt complexes, uh, cobalt in plus 3 oxidation state with oxygen as a, as a ligand will lead to pairing only in case of cobalt plus, plus 3, right? And when, whenever there is a metal with higher than plus 3 oxidation state, any metal, any branch metal, and it does not matter which ligand it is attached to, it will always lead to pairing. So this is one important thing that you can take home from this question, okay? And uh, the next question was, again from Jam, this is pretty easy, okay? But I uh, will just discuss it. <coughs> and I have been, uh, like, I have been, uh, Consistently, consistently asking you to learn the structures of amino acids because that is very important. You can actually, you know, uh, get. You can actually just. Uh, there, if if a question based on amino acid comes, it is actually free. Like you, there, there is always free marks for it, right? So always remember that. That uh, remember try and remember all the structures of amino acids. It's not very difficult. It will hardly take you one or two days. You just have to revise it again and again, and you will understand the structure. So the question say, said that if nine alanine and leucine are uh, put in a are put in a reaction, right? So what? How many different products can we get, right? So nine alanine we can write as uh, what is the formula of nine alanine? We have CH2, C double one OH, okay? Sorry, CHCOH. So this is the common structure of any amino acid, and then we have a R group as 
this phenyl ring. So it gets to high pH. So this is the structure of phenyl alanine, right? And if we draw the structure of leucine, so again, this is the core structure of any, any amino acid, COOH, NH2. And then we have this R group in, uh, in leucine, right? So 1, 2, 3. So this is structure. This is the structure for leucine, this is the structure for phenylalanine. And they have asked that these two are put in a reaction mixture and how many different kinds of products we can get. Right? So, see, if this, uh, so this is a formation of amide bond, you know, right? So this CEOH, right, can attack this amide bond, that will be one product. Or second product can be this CEOH, the CEOH of this group and the NH2 of this group, they, uh, they uh, form a bond and they form an amide bond, right? So one is the COOH carboxylic group of our phenylalanine and the uh, amine group of our leucine form one compound, right? So this is one compound. They form a amide bond. Or the car carboxyl carboxylic group of our uh, carboxyl okay, sorry, yeah, carboxylic group of our leucine and the amine group of the phenylalanine they form a bond and they form a amide bond. So that will be a second product. So two products are there, right? But if you are like see. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'll come on to that later. Then what can happen is, see, the, for, for example, there is one mole of, uh, the, the, there is one mole of nanalanine and there is one mole of leucine, right? So, it is not exclusively that the COH will attack the amine of uh, this leucine and this COH will attack the amine of phenylalanine. They can also, see, there are a lot of molecules existing. So, they, there will be another phenylalanine also existing, right? So, in the other phenylalanine, it can attack the amine of the other phenyl, phenyl alanine that is present, right? This COOH can attack the phenyl, the amine of the other phenyl alanine, right? Or this, or what can happen is, uh, similarly there will be a lot of molecules of leucine as well, right? So the carboxylate of uh, the leucine can attack the amine of the another leucine, right? So that is also one of the compounds. So the carboxylate of this particular phenyl alanine attacking the amine of other phenyl alanine. So that is the third product. And the fourth product is, this COH of uh, leucine attacking the amine of the uh, other leucine, right? So then we have four kinds of products that are possible. So the answer is four, right? But in, in the answer key, in the IIT answer key, they had given two to four, right? So some students just reacted this, uh, they did not consider the phenylalanine uh, reactivity or the leucine reactivity reacting with another leucine, right? They only consider that there is phenylalanine and leucine. So they thought that both, both is correct because if they had given, for example, excess, you know, uh, they had not mentioned whether it's one equivalent or there is excess of that or not, right? So, uh, so the answer they had given was two to four. So uh, you can write anything, uh, you, you could write two or four. But the important thing here is that you should always write four because that is always the possibility because you cannot take one, one, one molecule of this and one molecule of this, right? Uh, you obviously take in moles. And if you take in moles, there's always more than one molecule of phenylalanine existing and one more like there are thousands and thousands of molecules of phenylalanine and leucine. So you cannot control the reactivity if you are only taking phenylalanine and leucine in a reaction, right? There there will be there will be some product where the two more two act two molecules of phenylalanine are reacting with each other, right? So the correct answer, like technically the correct answer has to be four. Right. And uh, since I am talking about amino acids, there is one important thing as well, another question from amino acids itself and they had given glycine and they had asked the pKa value, right? So this is one of the most important questions. Like they can ask you the pKa values, sorry, not the pKa values, yeah, they can ask you the pKa values or uh, more important is they can ask you uh, uh, isoelectronic point of a particular amino acid, right? So how do you calculate the isoelectronic point? See, isoelectronic point is very easy to calculate. You just isoelectronic point. So, for example, this glycine, right? I know glycine does not have a uh, C. Glycine structure is CH2, COOH, and NH2, right? This is the structure of glycine. So, for glycine, the calculating the isoelectronic point is very easy. So, you have you will be given the pK of amine group, you will be given the pK of carboxylic group, right? So, what you do for calculating iso isoelectronic point is you just take the sum of the pKs and divide by 2. So you take the sum of pKs, sum of the pKa value 
okay upon 2 so that is how you calculate the uh, ice electronic point but what they did was they did a smart thing in the iit paper i think it came in jan 2016 uh, it came in right so what they did was they took for example a uh, amino uh, 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 acid where the r group also had some functionality right so let's say we take uh, what do we take we take uh, lysine right Lysine. I think this is the structure for lysine. So we have another amine group present in lysine in the side chain, right? Similarly, you can take aspartic acid or glutamic acid where we have a COOH group present in the side chain. Now the important thing here is, see, for example, the pKa of I am taking hypothetically, okay? The pKa over here is three. The pKa of amine group is say let's say ten, and the pKa of this amine group is let's say eleven, right? So now if you are asked the isoelectronic iso point, now many students did this uh, incorrectly. What they did was they took pK of all the three and divided by three. So what they did was three plus 11, 14, plus 10, 24, 24 divided by three and the isoelectronic iso point came out to be eight. But here is the catch. When you are taking out the isoelectronic point and there are more than two functionalities present, right over here we have three functionalities. Then you take the pK of the two closest functionalities, okay. So the two closest functionalities over here are 10 and 11 because these are the closest values. So 10 and 11. So that means 21 by 2. So the isoelectronic point comes out to be 10.5. So always remember this. We'll always take the for calculating the isoelectronic point. We'll always take pK values of only two groups, right? So if there are more than two groups present, you have to take the pK of the values which are the closest, right? Similarly, if you have say glutamic acid. So if you have glutamic acid. And so we have a COOH group over here, glutamic acid, right? Now, now the pK of this, let's say, is 4, right? So we have 10, 4 and 3. Now the two closest pK values are this 3 and this 4, right? So 7 by 2. This will be 7 by 2, so the isotronic point is 3.5. So just remember, don't do this mistake, that if there are more than two groups present, always take the value of 2 only, which are closest to each other, to calculate the isotronic point, okay?